Today we're going to be taking a look at what I would consider to be the toughest 1 to 8 on the market today. This is the Trigicon VCOG 1 to 8. Okay, so the Trigicon VCOG 1 to 8 by 28. Easily, hands down, one of the best optics I've ever reviewed on this channel. This thing is a beast. It is as tough as you're gonna get. Made out of 7075 T6 aluminum with a really thick 34 millimeter body. This thing is good to go. I'd put it on the same level of durability as like an L can. Though typically when you're talking about a 1 to 6 or a 1 to 8, companies will design those optics for the competition shooter in mind. Somebody who's gonna do three gun or something like that. And so you end up with an optic that's supposed to be light, it's supposed to be durable but at the same time durability isn't the main focus this thing was actually built from the ground up to be a combat optic VCOG stands for variable combat optical gun sight so this thing again was built from the integrated mount all the way up to the material that they use for the glass the housing and so forth to be a combat optic and that's what you get here so it has got some great features one of the things I like about this is that there was there's nothing I would change in terms of a combat optic if you were gonna take this and use it as like a three gun optic then there are some things that I would change but again if you're going to be using this as a, a hardened optic that you want to make sure that you have something that you can defend your life with then yeah there's nothing that I would change about this so let's go ahead and talk about some of the tech specs features and details of this site and then I'll talk to you guys about some of the experiences that I had with it shooting this is a 1 to 8 by 28 so at 1x this is supposed to have no magnification whatsoever but typically in scopes of this type you usually end up with a little bit of variation between 1.1 and 1.2 magnification so there's a little bit of magnification when you're shooting with both eyes open sometimes you could see two different sizes of the object that you're looking at with the VCOG it's as close to 1x as I've ever seen meaning that I can shoot with both eyes open when this thing's all the way down to 1x and I, the target looks exactly the same through both eyes so it is as true of a 1x as I've ever seen but then again you have the ability to dial it all the way up to 8 power and at 8 power I mean you could really reach out there as far as I can see it does have a ballistic drop reticle with a first focal plane reticle so basically what we have is a segmented circle so there's four different segments of the circle in the middle of that there is a uh, smaller reticle with some bullet drop compensating hash marks and stuff like that on it I tried to get some uh, video of it but apparently I didn't have the camera installed on the back of the scope uh, correctly and so the image isn't exactly what I want most of the shooting that I did was in four to five power uh, depending on you know what distance I was shooting but you could see the reticle looking at it at four and a half power what it looks like the reticle actually changes being first focal plane so in 1x or at 1x basically the reticle is just going to be a segmented circle that's the majority of what you see and you would use that to make your aim right but then as you zoom in with the first focal plane the reticle enlarges uh, enlarges excuse me and the segmented part of that circle becomes larger and almost you know out of frame and then you would actually use the reticle that is hard to see at 1x which enlarges and that gives you your uh, ballistic drops and so forth so again you have uh, a true CQB firearm that is also perfect for longer ranges Today we're going to be taking a look at the Vortex Viper PST Gen 2 5 to 25 by 50 rifle scope. All right, now let's go over some of the details and features. This is a second focal plane scope with an MOA reticle. They also sell it in first focal plane with both MOA and mill dot reticles, but you want to kind of figure exactly what's going to fit your needs the best. Because for me, long range shooting, I decided to go with a second focal plane reticle due to the fact that it does not enlarge as I go through my magnification range. So the reticle looks exactly the same on five power as it does, does on 25 power. So if you're shooting longer ranges, that means that the amount of coverage that you're gonna have on your target is gonna be exactly the same all the way through your magnification range, where in first focal plane, as you adjust your magnification higher and higher, the reticle actually gets bigger and bigger inside your viewing window, and that can cover up more of the target at longer ranges. So you kinda have to balance whether or not you want a first or second focal plane, depending on exactly what you're gonna be using and four very fine precision shots you might want to consider second focal plane and then if you want to be able to see the reticle a little bit larger as you're stretching it out then you might want to go with first focal plane now this does have an illuminated reticle it's very nice it's very bright it's got several different settings with an off setting in between each, each setting so you don't have to bring it all the way back to zero and then adjust your magnification range you can be in setting nine and then go in between nine and eight and it's going to be off and then go down to eight and it's going to be on again and so that's nice but keep in mind that batteries in 
optics like this do not last very long. Uh, as a matter of fact, I actually left this on by accident for like two days, and by the time I grabbed the rifle, it was already dead. Granted, it was probably on the highest setting at that point, but keep some extra batteries around in case you want to, you know, switch that out and use that. This also has a really nice parallax adjustment. Goes all the way from 25 yards all the way out to infinity. So it's set up really nice. If you're looking to grab a low power variable optic but don't want to fork up the big bucks, stay tuned because today we're taking a look at the Strike Eagle 1-6X from Vortex. Enter the Vortex Strike Eagle, a fairly robust 1-6X scope that's a fantastic entry level choice for plinking and still totally serviceable if you decide to get into competition shooting. For the uninitiated, the Strike Eagle utilizes a rotating turret that sets your desired level of magnification. We quite like that the ring is set far enough forward that it won't interfere with scope covers if you run them, and manipulating the magnification feels nice. It does require a tiny bit of force to rotate, and is certainly not going to adjust on its own. You can even add a throw lever to get a little bit more leverage if desired. For size comparison, the Strike Eagle is approximately 96% the length of three micro bananas. While the lower zoom settings are crystal clear, it should be said that the Strike Eagle does begin to show a little bit of distortion at the 6x mark. It's nothing game breaking, but it does make punching out past 300 yards or so a little bit challenging. The scope turrets are capped, but given the style of optic we're talking about here, you're likely not going to be adjusting windage and elevation on the fly. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Vortex Razor HD Gen 2 line of rifle scopes. The first thing I want to talk about is the glass quality. The glass quality in these rifle scopes is excellent. There's no tunneling to speak of at four and a half power and on 27 power or the maximum magnification of 18 power on the three to 18 power model, you still have perfect edge to edge clarity, great glass quality. The eye box is very forgiving if you're coming from something like a Vortex PST, Burris XDR2, something like that. The eye box is better, the glass quality is better, you're gonna notice a significant performance increase, both in optical quality, the eye box, everything, over those scopes that are around the $1,000 to $1,200 price point. This is really where the point of diminishing returns begins when it comes to optical quality. You could spend two or three times the price and have a variety of people who don't know the price take a look through various rifle scopes in a comparison and most people would see little, if any, difference. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at the Vortex Diamondback Tactical. Now this optic is very popular, it came out just about a year and a bit ago, and now it's very popular for a very good reason. It's a very affordable, uh, high quality first focal plane optic, which is what the, the market has been demanding for years. Now this one, the MSRP is about 500, but you can find it as low as about 350 US if you know it's really on sale. Usually it's around 400. This optic has ED glass, which is probably one of the uh, best features on it. Um, so ED glass, a glass etched reticle, uh, with the EBR2C reticle, uh, it's got a very long eye relief. I mean, this has 3.9 inches of eye relief, which we're going to get to in just a moment. Anyway, what do I think about this optic? Well, it is a very good quality optic for its price. Um, it has a, all the features that you are going to be looking for to do some long-range shooting at a budget level. 